What is up, ladies and gentlemen? I just woke up from a nap and ah, just had love and compassion flowing through my every cell in this moment and feeling like I could burst out into tears in any moment, tears of gratitude and tears of love, you know? Um, tears of love for, for humanity, tears of compassion, like my heart opening to levels that I've never opened to before. And recently I had a pretty big breakthrough when it comes to my ego and chasing accomplishments and just this perpetual chase of stature and status and climbing some invisible ladder and money and business and <clears throat> and I just had this experience and uh, this experience of what's the point of everything this was like five days ago like what's the point of ever of anything you know during this COVID thing I've, I've recognized that I've been forced to slow down Obviously, we all have. And in that slowing down process, I'm forced to sit with this wound. It's like it's hit, it's like all day, whether in the background or sometimes right in my face, this wound of like, if I stop chasing, what's the point of life? <laughs> if I stop seeking things, What's, why am I even here on earth? You know, this very masculine part of myself. It's just like without, without a mission or chasing some accomplishment, like why am I here? What's the point of it all? And and just on that very day that I, I broke down in tears when I had this visceral experience of What's the point of it all? Like, like I've, I've intellectually thought of these things before, you know, I've intellectually taught myself that there is no end destination and there is no goal and it's about the journey and all of these cliches, but I had a visceral experience of this shattering inside of myself and I became very, very quiet and very, very still. And a despair washed over me, a pure despair washed over me for all of the years that I've been chasing, for all of the years that I've needed to prove myself outside of myself. And I was brought into this space of nothingness, this space of true nothingness. You can probably feel it in my space right now. I've been here for days now. <laughs> and from this nothingness, everything is created. And from this nothingness that I was in this one particular day that it happened, I watched the Tibetan Book of the Dead, a documentary. And I was in this hyperbaric oxygen chamber that uh, where it's glass and I'm looking up at a movie. I'm doing hyperbaric oxygen at Marin. It, advanced hyperbaric recovery in Marin. They're uh, incredible. I'm going to do several videos about them and my experience. I'm almost halfway through a 40 treatment package. That's a whole other separate story. And I'm watching the Tibetan Book of the Dead and I'm in this agony inside it's a p very pure agony it doesn't frighten me it doesn't take me into any mind games about uh, depression or illness or what's happening to me or this or that it's just a very pure human experience that I've read about in countless spiritual texts this emptiness this void this this love all at the same wave And I'm watching this book, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, and these yogis devoted to two things in their life. Their whole life is devoted to these two things. 
and it's compassion for all beings and it's witnessing of the mind to tame this beast and to have compassion for all beings. And I was crying in the tank, in the, in the hyperbaric tank, just like, what if I devoted my life to having compassion for all beings? Like, what if that was my devotion? Instead of the, the chasing of the money, the chasing of, the chasing of all of these things, right? Like, what if my, what if my true devotion was to have compassion for everyone? Like, and everything. And my ego, of course, kicked in like, that's stupid. Like, that's fucking pointless, right? And then my heart and like a big part of me thinks about that as the ultimate path in this lifetime. Like the ultimate path is a path of compassion for all beings. Granting beingness for all ways of life and all creatures on this planet. And as they talk about in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, including the the tortured ones and the realm of the, the hungry ghosts and the hell beings and all of these creatures who live in these dark, dark places, these dark patterns, these dark tormented cycles. And I just uh, committed to myself, you know, for this phase of my life, you can go through my YouTube channel. I've been in many phases. <laughs> sometimes they last, sometimes they don't. Um, I'm just committing to compassion for all beings. I'm committing to that. I'm committing to, to have compassion, to grant beingness to every perspective, to every person to every way of life. And I don't care about my opinions that much anymore. I don't care about my viewpoints and my knowledge and what's right and what's happening on the planet. Like, I just don't care. I'm using this time to awaken. I'm using this time to step out entirely of my ego of in levels that I've never before d done. I'm using this time to explore this inner terrain, this inner terrain that is infinite, wondrous, beautiful, magical, unique versus those outer terrains that are, they're less wondrous <laughs> in a way. They're, I kind of know what I get there, right? This inner world, my breath, my heart, my consciousness, my meditations, my, my ego, It's so, so magical. It's so special. And it's so needed. When we change this inner terrain, we change something for humanity. I remember when I did not take my own life years ago and I decided to transcend this illness and I started healing and I started coming out of it. I, I, I knew that I had changed humanity by, by not taking my own life. I, I knew I had changed humanity by healing in a deeper way than I ever could with my preaching and my teaching and shouting. So I just invite everybody to explore the inner terrains for the next week and really feel this space of this heartness, this compassion, this space that I'm in right now and see if you can bring it on to yourself. If we drop the accomplishments, if we drop the ego, if we drop these things just for a moment, we don't have to kill them. We don't have to remove them. But if we do just take, put them aside for a moment, if I put it aside for a moment, I'm left with a total emptiness, total void, a nothingness. It's freaky, it's scary, it's terrifying. And my only solace in that space, my only goal, my only reason to, to be in that space is compassion for all beings. That my compassion is needed for all beings. Your compassion is needed for all beings.
I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you, Ho'oponopono. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. Forgiveness, compassion to all beings, past, present, and future, to any beings that I've hurt, please forgive me. Let us forgive ourselves. I hope you guys are finding your inner sanctuary during this time of COVID and quarantine. We're like buzzing bees traveling around with no place to rest. All this life just buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. Where do we go? What do we do? What do we do? That inner solace, that inner sanctuary, that's a win. That's the win. That's the accomplishment. That's the goal. And then, as they say in The Last Samurai, the movie, that would be a good death. <laughs> we can have a really good death when we find that inner sanctuary. And believe it or not, that may be the ultimate goal in this life. A preparation for the ultimate test. Death. All right, guys, have a beautiful evening, day, morning, wherever you may be in the world. And I'll be tuning in every week or two as my space is shifting radically during this time. All right, ciao.